Hello and welcome to Ladies Talking Business, the program that breaks business down to the simplest terms. I'm Edidion Iwang. And I'm Irene Ubani. Today we will be talking about foreign investment and the thin line between infrastructure and industrialization, focusing on Chinese investments in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Well, we have, we have with us in the studio the DG of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Moda Yusuf. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Sir. Thank you very much. It's Thank a pleasure to be here. Okay, so yes. um, this is the second $60 billion investment to Africa by the Chinese government. As we heard the President Xi Jinping say at the concluded FOCAC summit. Now, apart from this investment to Africa in general, um, China National Petroleum Corporation secured the financing of the Ajaokuta, Kaduna, and Kanu pipeline project. Th that is costing about $2.8 billion. There's also the 3.5 Mambila power project, mm -hmm. you know, that they also secured, among other investments and loans that they took. Isn't this one too many loans? Not exactly. You see, if you look at the Nigerian economy, just like many other African economies, mm -hmm. uh, there are major gaps in these economies. And the key gaps are gaps of resources. And without resources, there's a limit to which you can progress as a nation. Even if you look at even the national budgets, sometimes almost 50% of the resources we use to fund the budget is borrowed, either domestically or from uh, foreign countries. Yeah. So uh, getting debt or engaging in debt financing is not in itself a bad idea. The whole idea is to build the capacity of the economy to be more productive, to be more sustainable. So what is most critical when it comes to issue of borrowing? First is the cost of the borrowing. How reasonable is the cost? I'm talking now about interest rates. What interest rate are you paying? Secondly, what is the tenor of the loan? How soon are you expected to pay, to pay back? And what kind of moratorium do you have on the loan? Moratorium is the, is the time within which you are given before you start paying the principal. So once those things are there, and once you're also very clear as a matter of national economic strategy, areas in which you want to deploy these resources. And one thing about some of these loans, particularly concessionary bilateral loans, mm -hmm. or loans from multilateral organizations. When I say multilateral, I mean loans from the World Bank, yes, from ADB, yes. and all of that. The thing about them is that they are tied to projects. So they are not as vulnerable as, say, commercial loans where you just take, you raise a bond, mm -hmm. you take it and just dump it into the federation account mm -hmm. and people begin to spend. Okay. So what is important is to get priorities right in terms of what kind of project are you also committing these funds to and how well are you utilizing the, the resources. Mm -hmm. okay. So for many African economics, and Nigeria inclusive, we need to build capacity. And the starting point in building capacity is to develop your infrastructure. With that infrastructure, you can only make so much progress. So that is the beauty of this. We are talking now about the railway project. We are talking about the power project. Yeah. We are talking about roads. We are talking about airports. And if you look at some of these projects properly, some of them are even ordinarily bankable. When I say bankable, there are things that can generate enough revenue, revenue. to even revenue. begin to yes. pay the yes. loan. So that is what it's all about. So to that extent, I don't have too much worries. The debt crisis we have now, first, is arising largely from domestic debt. We have borrowed terribly domestically. Very expensive funds. That's the time government was borrowing at 18%, 17%. That is why our debt service obligation is so high. Yes. And that is why the government is now talking about rebalancing the debt portfolio, switching from domestic to foreign. Mm -hmm. Because the burden of debt was becoming so high, then there was also the crowding out effect on the private sector. Because if the banks can buy treasury bills at 15% at 17%, 
Why would they borrow money? Why would they lend money to, to an investor? An investor. Why would they lend money to a manufacturer or anybody doing business? So that was a major distortion in the economy itself. Yeah. So there is some wisdom, a great deal of wisdom, in borrowing concessionary terms mm -hmm. yes. to finance infrastructure. And if you do so faithfully, I think this economy has the capacity to grow, to be able to pay these, these debts. All right, you mentioned a lot about infrastructure. We'll talk about that later in the program. Mm. And how, however, as at last year, the Debt Management Office put Nigeria's indebtedness to China at $3.22 billion, which is really massive, right? But then, um, what are the risks involved in Nigeria's continuous loan from China of this nature? You see, our all revenue, all the revenue that mm -hmm. we get, mm -hmm. Annually, should be well over even $50 billion. Mm -hmm. So, if you are talking of $3.1 billion, it's billion not billion. as if it's something that will actually shake this economy to its foundation. So, I agree we need to be careful, but it's not as if it's such a big debt that will weigh us down so heavily, especially if the, 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 the door service obligations, if the terms are good enough. So the debt service thing, that is why the government is trying to also rebalance, rebalance the debt okay. by switching now from uh, domestic to foreign. To so foreign, more foreign. So I, I don't see it as too much of something that could be, could be scary or frightening, you know, given the capacity of this economy. What is important is for us to get our priorities right mm -hmm. and push the economy in the right direction. Because we are here to unlock the huge potentials in the private sector. We have bundles, huge potentials Very true. of entrepreneurs across all levels that can do great things. Yeah. The, president mentioned the issue that. is about the environment. Mm -hmm. And one of the critical bottlenecks is infrastructure. You set up a business, you're already spending almost 30% on energy. You know the cost of diesel these days? You know, there are some enterprises, there are some business, there are some factories mm -hmm. of your that they cannot energy. just rely on public power supply. So mm -hmm. it is very expensive doing business here because of infrastructure. So if you are able to get that out of the way, I think the worry about this debt thing, I think, will, 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 will reduce significantly. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Uh, we'll take a quick break now. When we return, we'll talk more about the concerns about getting these loans from China. Don't go away. Well, welcome back. Thank you for staying with us on the program. So, Mr. Moda Yusuf, there have been some concerns that these cheap Chinese loans have a tendency to create an unfavorable degree of dependency on China as a creditor. What are your thoughts on this? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, this economy is approximately about 500 billion US dollars. And all these things we are talking about are possibly even less than 10 billion. But then the 500 billion dollars, sorry to cut you short, that was before the recession. I'm not sure we've been able to reach that mark. No, you see, it, 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 has, it has gone down slightly mm -hmm. because of the exchange rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if yeah. you value it and you factor in the exchange rate depreciation, mm -hmm. it will come to over 400 billion. You know, but the point I'm trying to underscore is that the economy itself. It's a very big economy. So this perpetual dependence on, on China, in any case, you need financing for this things. Mm -hmm, true. And you have to get the financing that has the best terms. If you are not taking from China, the option is for you to go and raise bond. We have done a Machine bit of that, bonds, yeah. Yeah. which is fairly expensive, because mm -hmm. we are talking about sometimes 70%, which is very high. These facilities we are talking about, the 1%, 2%, some, some of them over 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Yes. So the only thing which you may begin to worry or which people could begin is that this is skewed in favor of China. But if that is where the best terms, the best deals are okay. coming from, why not? Okay. And just as I said, 
It is the choice of what you use the funds for that mm -hmm. matters. Yes, sir. And as, as a nation, we also have to be very strategic True. in the way we do things. We need to be sure that we also don't go about it in a way that will make us vulnerable. vulnerable. But in all of this, the, what is important is building the capacity of the economy. Because in an economy, government has a major role to play in providing infrastructure. Some people have argued that, OK, you can get investors to provide infrastructure, of course. But there's a limit to which inve private investors can go. Because by the time they begin to analyze the credit risk and all of that, because the private investor, we also have to go and raise funds from, mm -hmm. from, from a bank, either domestically or from abroad. Yeah. Of which and given the risk profile mm -hmm. around here, it also will not be so easy to raise funds to fund infrastructure in this economy. So for me, this is about the best deal that we can get. Okay. And if we're able to commit to it properly, if the politicians and bureaucrats don't also create distractions in the implementation of the projects, I'm sure it will bring a lot of value to this economy. But then when they say that these are mm. interest-free loans, mm. where would they really be getting their profits from? from? Because they cannot, the Chinese can't tell me that, oh, they have they are funding these projects and that project, and they are giving us concessionary loans, interest-free loans, and then some of them are grants. So what is the need for them as the givers? You see, under, that is what you call the Belt and Road Initiative. Yes, the Belt and Road Initiative. Of the Chinese government. Yes. Altogether, this initiative is over 150 billion US dollars over quite some time. Mm -hmm. And it's not just uh, for Africa, Asian countries, some part of you and some part mm -hmm. of America yeah. are, are part of this. Mm -hmm. It's a question of also broadening the Chinese influence around the world. It's a global economy. There's global competition. People are a bit of territorial things. Yes, yes. Expand, yeah. yes expand their influence. And you can't blame them. What's important is the economic diplomacy strategy of each country. Of course, there is no free lunch. They can't be giving you all this for free. For free. But they're also thinking of things beyond the, 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 the loan. They're looking at, OK, they have equipment, which they also want to export. Most of these projects, all the key components, we also come we from China. come back to that, we will definitely come, so you to, come to China. So it's also creating opportunities for, for them. them. It's creating markets for their own products. But this time, we're not talking about consumer products. We are talking about capital products, capital equipment. That would have a ripple effect. A lot of those things will also come from China. So it is a win-win deal. Yeah. Okay. That is the way it is. So, sorry to cut you. Um, mm. While we're doing our research, we read up on um, Zambia not being able to pay back some of their loans some and how loans China is. is taking you know, some basic, like some major infrastructure because of that. So in the case that Nigeria is mm. unable to pay Loans. What then happens if we're unable to pay back some of these loans? What happens? Well, I haven't read the details of the deal. Okay. Because in each deal, I mean, there will be clauses, there will be penalties, and things like that. That is the way it is in any uh, debt financing yes, deal, yes. whatever it is, either bilaterally yeah, or even between companies. Yeah. There will be an agreement. I haven't read the details. So if it comes to that, also, of course, we have to pay for, for default. But the thing is that you can't say that because there's a default and begin to carry your railway coaches mm -hmm. or the rail track <laughs> or something. Of course, but of course. you can't be taking them to China. Yeah. So that's the difference between investment that is solid on ground, which you call foreign direct investment, yeah. and investment which you call portfolio investment. That can, of course, be can, 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 that liquid that can move away. There's no opportunity for foreign flights and the rest e exactly. of Exactly. But mm -hmm. what is important in all of this is the discipline of the political leadership. Because many of the African economies are also not disciplined mm -hmm. in Enough. the way they manage resources. So that could be a factor. And you can remember, even the president of the uh, People's Republic of China was talking about vanity projects. Yes. That they are not going to be financing vanity projects. So that means, even on their part, 
They will do some yeah, assessment and evaluation of the project, of the project that they are going to finance. They are very keen with um, projects on transportation, yes. energy, telecommunication. IT. Yes. 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 Okay. All right, and then in your opinion, do you think that the government is feels more comfortable taking loans from the Chinese government than the Western nations? You see, the Chinese government is very forthcoming. They give you loans with minimum strings attached. The terms are very concessionary, and generally they are also more aggressive. Even the average Chinese investor is as aggressive as the government. And you can see the speed at which they are moving in terms of reaching out to, I mean, they have virtually dominated the whole of the African yeah, continent. That is what it looks like. And we have you know, and after, after they have come, you can see now we have Theresa May now coming. Uh, Macron, Macron, Macron coming. Macron you know, coming. but these guys have gone far. You know? So they are very proactive. And I mean, it's a space, the space is open for everybody. It's for those who are smart enough to take. Come into the market yeah. fast enough. Come, I mean, capture, mm -hmm. capture the place as fast as you can. But again, just as I said, we also have to be conscious of our own interests. We have to mm -hmm. also be very strategic in this partnership. And the political leadership must also That's demonstrate true. transparency and sincere commitment to, it. to the development of this infrastructure and ensuring that we get value for money. Because sometimes the bu bureaucrats and the, and the politicians mm -hmm. can become a problem even in the implementation of some of these projects. Mm -hmm. We have had instances where we took some of these loans and because of the interest of some bureaucrats, yeah. they didn't allow those projects to, to function. function. Yes. So the discipline at the level of political leadership is very, very important. The politicians and the bureaucrats. All right, and then um, still speaking on the importance of these fundings helping us as a nation, right? Some experts have said that they are a little concerned, one being Frank Jacobs, who said that for these Chinese, one way or the other, these funds will still be repatriated back, back to their to countries them. because by the time they come here to construct this infrastructural project, they are bringing their equipment, the labor mostly, they are from China. They're from China, which somehow, in a way, takes the opportunity to give jobs to the locals. What's so your take on this? all the funds go back to yeah, China. Exactly. Everything still goes back to them. What capacity do we have to produce machineries? What capacity do we have to produce rail tracks? What capacity do we have to produce sophisticated machines, coaches, and all of that? We also have to be realistic. In terms of labor and maybe issues of local content, yes. of course, these are some of the things that can be embedded into the contract. Now, for some levels of uh, activities in this project, Nigerians have to be part of it. Yeah. Okay, yes. For true. some of this execution of this project, for purposes of knowledge transfer, Nigerians have to we partner yes. with the engineers and things like that. Those things can be part of the, part of the agreement. But to say that uh, they are, if you don't bring it from China, you will bring it from elsewhere because we don't have the capacity. The key things we produce are basically consumer good, products. Good, yes. Consumer products. We don't have capacity. I mean, we have been on Ajakuta for how many years? Over 30 years? Yeah. Where is Ajakuta today? Nothing is still happening. After spending billions of dollars, that speaks to what happens to an economy where you don't have the right kind of governance? Still on the you, throw, you, th you, th you throw in a lot of money, money. I don't yeah. get any value from yeah. it. Yes. People have taken contracts, all sorts of things, and they have disappeared. The project is still lying there. You know, at some point, I was telling myself, I feel like we should have a maintenance minister, one who goes around each project, you know, ensuring that the project Everything that you're being paid is, yeah. for is executed and completed and not just abandoned. You see, it's all about the quality of governance and quality of leadership. Mm -hmm. That is what it is. And that is why, because our governance structure is also weak, mm -hmm. our public institutions are weak, for our kind of economy, the less role they play, the better the for better the economy. For us. Mm -hmm. But so wouldn't you, you know? say that 
this is a critical time because I mean next year we have the elections coming up. you don't know who is coming back into power this is the president that is signing this agreement because there's a possibility or the tendency for another person to come in and in some way or the other abandon some or neglect projects, some of these projects so would you have would you think it would have been better to wait for the elections to come and then we know who is ruling before we make such critical decisions no, no, no. It's, it's a sovereign thing. Okay. This is sovereign a contract. This is sovereign agreement. So it is binding on whoever comes in. Comes, comes in. in. Okay. I mean, the railway project from uh, Abuja to Kaduna. To Kaduna. Started, was started by Jonathan administration. But well, this government came and completed, and, and completed it. it. At least it's now functioning. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who started it. It doesn't matter who completed it. At least the Nigerians are taking advantage of that. And it's bringing value to them. Have you been so, on that train before? I have once. And it, no, the services, yeah, it's I think really the services good. It's uh -huh. really good. Yeah, yeah, I, I give yeah. it to them on it's that been one. Really that, is, that is what we should have done several years ago. But at least it's still better late than never. Than never. Because it's amazing, a country of this size, Trucking virtually everything on the road. That is why things are so expensive. Cost of haulage, the state of the roads, you know, almost getting to a state of a failed yeah. state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a major thing that we need to commit to. And I'm happy that the government at least is taking some steps mm -hmm. to do that. Okay, all right, sir. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll be talking about the thin line between infrastructure and industrialization. Don't go away. Well, thank you for staying with us. So, we, like I mentioned earlier, you know, um, China has already secured the financing for the um, Ajao Kuta, Kaduna, and Kano pipeline project. It would seem that now the government is focusing on infrastructure, which is good, but some people would argue that infrastructure should go with industrialization and innovation. I mean, it's also part of the SDGs, SDG, the Sustainable yeah. Development Goals. But we're focusing more on infrastructure now. Do you think we should you know, work on it together simultaneously? While we do infrastructure, we work on industrialization rather than do infrastructure and then later come to focus on industrialization. You see, let's uh, understand the rules mm -hmm. of the private sector and the public sector. Okay. The public sector has a very significant role in infrastructure provision. And it is very difficult to industrialize without infrastructure. There is no nation that you can put, point to Mm -hmm. that you can regard as an industrialized nation that doesn't have infrastructure. excellent infrastructure. infrastructure. Yeah. So government has a responsibility to do that. If the infrastructure is in place, private investors will come. You have a good because point. it will yeah. make more sense. You'll be able to invest profitably and sustainably. Yeah. And they are sure if you don't have to be worrying yes. about having to go and buy diesel, you don't have to be worrying about uh, trucking goods from one point to the Means other. Of transportation. Mm -hmm. Means of transportation, power, telecoms, and all those things. Yeah. So infrastructure is key. And there's a limit, just as I said, to which the private sector can provide infrastructure. Government has to play a lead role in that, in that which is what is happening now. So if that is in place, as it is going on, the private sector will also be coming on. But already we have some elements of industrialization, industrialization taking place. Yeah. But the cost of production is too high. That's why manufacturers are not competitive. Mm -hmm. One of the most vulnerable sectors today in this economy is the manufacturing, manufacturing sector. The CBN says, OK, give money to the manufacturers, do this to manufacturers, the banks are reluctant to give them. Because it's a, it's a very risky terrain. Because of the challenges Cost that they face. Sustainability and yeah. maintenance. Maintenance, you, you know, sustainability, margin, yeah. cost of production, competitiveness, 
influx of uh, substandard goods, smuggling, all those things are hitting them. And on top of that, many of the manufacturing companies are also heavily import dependent. So that's another major problem with and them. Favorable policies can mm -hmm. also affect. Yes. The, uh, so each time there is an issue with the exchange rate, with this, mm -hmm. many so of them start crashing. Yeah. They start collapsing. Mm -hmm. So for sustainable industrialization, there is something in the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan, which is about resource-based industrialization. It is the resources that you have that should determine your strategy for industrialization. industrialization. You don't start jumping to say you want to go and produce vehicles when you don't have a steel and engineering infrastructure on ground. It doesn't make sense. True, true that. But you can be doing a lot in agro processing, agro allied. We are an, we are an oil, oil, oil producing country. Yeah. We should be doing a lot in refineries, in petrochemicals, in fertilizers. It's long term mm -hmm. jobs. Long -term jobs. And these are, these are areas in which ordinarily we should have very good competitive advantage. Because that's our strength, you know. Yes, that's but because the place have been dominated by government, the bureaucrats and politicians, the huge potentials in those sectors have not been unlocked. Mm. So it's a, reform, a major reform issue. So industrialization and infrastructure development can go hand in hand. hand. But infrastructure should so come before industrialization. Industrial, and it will naturally follow. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need the government to tell an entrepreneur to come and invest. We have such when things they happening see, When they Israel, see that you know. happening, they come in and they invest. Yes. So when we have the infrastructure in place, you we see the potential of capitalists okay, coming this, in. Yeah. To exactly. In you see it and you see that, OK, it's, it's profitable to do business here. I don't have to worry about uh, transportation. Okay, and then, um, I don't have to worry about power. I don't have to worry about yeah. all of these things. True. Okay, and then um, we know that your the LCCI is keen on asking the government to initiate and implement policies that would help grow SMEs. So are they also helping out with trying to tell the government to implement policies that would also help industries as well? Of course, that is what we do. Uh, we do a lot of advocacy advocacy around the business environment mm -hmm. generally, about infrastructure, about tax, about import duty, about investment policy, mm -hmm. about IT policy, about energy policy, about trade policy, all the policy issues that impact on business. We engage regularly mm -hmm. with the government on all these issues. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Yusuf. So would you kindly explain one commercial term to our viewers out there? Well, let's uh, explain what GDP means. Okay. okay. Because it's a very popular term. People hear GDP, GDP. Everybody knows what GDP uh -huh. is. <laughs> but what it means to the layman is the totality of the output of the economy. Mm. That is what gross domestic product means. If you sum up all the things that everybody is doing, either in manufacturing, in services, in transportation, in maritime, in trading, in media, in uh, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. as long as it's an economic activity, as long as it's creation of value, then it's part of the gross domestic, which is totality of the output. So when we say that the GDP is growing, it means that the totality we're of the output in the economy growing. is growing. Mm. If we say that the GDP is contracting, we're not producing that means we are not producing yeah, much. Absolutely. And each time it goes up or down, it has implications for the citizens. It has implications for jobs. Mm -hmm. It has implications for poverty. It has implications for income. It has implications for the welfare of the citizens. Mm -hmm. So that is what GDP means. Thank you very much. And that will be it on Ladies Talking Business. I am Iron Ubani. And I'm Edidio Nguyen Wang. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Bye.